Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a good day. I wanted to do a really quick tutorial for beginners and show you how to set up object buffers and multiple passes for rendering. It's a little bit more complex because we have two different settings panels now. So we have our Octane settings here, or you can find that under Octane, Octane settings. And then we also have our Cinema 4D render settings. So by default, this will be under the standard render engine. You're going to want to twirl down this and click on Octane render, and that will give you some more um, options under Octane render. Um, all of this data on the left hand side, this is Octane settings, so like your samples and all that stuff, it's going to be inherited over here automatically unless you overwrite the kernel settings. So if you enable this, you can change the settings here, but by default, it's just going to inherit all of these settings. Under render passes, this is where you're going to add all of your multi passes. So if we go to our save, um, let's go ahead and click on save, and I have this outputting to a folder, and I have Photoshop. Uh, PSD and 16 bits. And then if I want to add any multi passes, I could check on multi pass here, but that's actually not how we're going to do it. We're going to go to Octane Render and we have enable render passes in this render pass tab. So if we click on this, you'll notice that this multi pass will get checked on and we'll have post effects. Don't go back into here and specify your file path here. Don't worry about that. Just go to your Octane Render tab and specify your file path right here. So we're gonna specify that folder and we'll save that out. So now I'm set up to find any multi-pass objects I want and add those. So we have a bunch of different options here, material passes, um, we have info passes. Info passes is actually where ambient occlusion is uh, kind of hidden. So I like to check that on, I use that fairly often. Um, there's a lot of different options in here you can pick. Um, we have render layer masks, which we'll get into in a second. Most of them are under beauty passes though, so I usually check on maybe reflection, maybe shadows, and you can play with some of these other options. So the other important one is render layer masks. So these are the object buffers. So you just have to get used to the fact that they're called layer masks and not buffers and you're gonna be just fine. So let's say that we have four objects in our scene. We're gonna right click on a pyramid. We're gonna to go to uh, Cinema 4D Octane Tags and we'll click on an Octane Object Tag. And under here, um, if you go to the object layer, we have layer ID and bake ID. Just worry about the layer ID for right now. So we have layer ID one, and then under our render layer mask, we'll do the corresponding ID one, and that will put a buffer on that pyramid. So we'll do the same with the sphere. We'll add a new octane object tag, and we're gonna make this two, and we'll make this two over here so that we have that one. We'll just control drag, and we'll add three to this object, make sure three is checked, and we'll do the same with four. So just a little note about the format. If you wanna do object buffers, I, for some reason, I tried PNG and it did not work. It works with the regular Cinema 4D, but not with Octane for me. It just came through without any object buffers. It was pretty frustrating. So stick with TIFF, PSD, or EXR probably. Uh, we'll just go with PSD for right now. All right, so we have everything set up, I believe, and we can hit render. So one thing I did want to mention Let's go ahead and hit render. You'll notice in the bottom we have 250 samples and it's rendering through these right now. You can see the green bar, uh, progress bar here. Once it hits the end, um, just look down here. It says rendering layer mask one and it has 128 samples. It has to calculate. Now it's doing the second mask. And the point that I wanted to bring up was that it has to render all these object buffers uh, separately and it adds a decent amount of time actually. Unlike the regular Cinema 4D render, you can really increase your render times by adding a lot of buffers with Octane, which is a huge bummer. Um, just keep that in mind. Really be um, careful about what you add object buffers to. It can dramatically increase your render times. I mean, I had a render yesterday that it added about two hours just for the buffers. So be very careful about that. That's definitely one of the limitations I've found in Octane. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we've got the render set up and we hit render. Let's check it out. We have our main render. We have that ambient occlusion, shadow, reflection, and then we have our different buffers. So we have four buffers in here. Now here's another thing I wanted to bring up. If you notice four, three, and two look perfect. For some reason, one is all messed up. This was supposed to be the pyramid, but it's, uh, it's like the inverse of the pyramid for some reason. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, 
Uh, maybe one of you guys can tell me, but um, instead of using number one, I just skip number one and I put that at five. And then we'll go back to our render settings here and we'll check five and uncheck one and re-render it. For some reason, um, using ID one does some weird things on my computer. It might just be my computer, I'm not totally sure, but I just avoided that by not using one and just jumping right to two, three, four, and so on. All right, so let's jump into our viewer again and see what that looks like. So now we have five and it rendered that triangle out perfectly and everything else looks good. So that is how to set up all of your multi-passes. It's a little bit confusing at first because you have two different panels to work with. Um, but just remember, um, it's going to inherit all of the data over here and all you need to really worry about is this render pass um, tab over here and you can just twirl all these down and pick what you need. Um, there's a lot more options in here. You can even include different lighting passes, which is awesome. Um, and the other thing to mention, just note, um, just use this file path right here. There are two different file paths for multi-pass you can use but it's gonna get a little bit weird, so just use your multi-pass um, path right here. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing, but it's not too bad once you get started. And also the object buffers, you just gotta remember there are layer masks and layer ID, not object buffers, and you should be good to go. So thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. Hopefully if you're just starting out in Octane, this will be helpful to you, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks guys.